Hey all. So one of the most common questions I get in streams or in comments is some variation on, hey, what's a good SIG level for X champ? What SIG level should I get them to before ranking them up? When, when should I stop feeding them stones, right? And I do the same thing to figure out my answer to that question every single time. And I figured that it might be helpful to make this video going over that process for anyone who wants to be able to do the same more easily. So as you can tell by this video, I go to Aunt May and I look that up. I just, I look at the champion. So let's just pick Wolverine down here because he's one of the first ones we're going to talk about. And if you've never seen this graph before over here on the right for the SIG ability, maybe this is all you need, because this is one of the best possible graphical tools to look at this kind of thing. This whole site is amazing. I've talked about it before. Duckslug did incredible work. Check it out if you haven't before. But if this graph isn't immediately speaking to you, then let's talk again about what I look for. So the first thing I notice is that this particular SIG ability follows a pretty linear improvement, right? It's basically a straight line. And one of the things that means is that each SIG stone that you add, or if you want to think about it as every 20 SIG stones that you add, are going to be roughly as impactful as the previous 20. And this is usually true of champions where there is real benefit to taking them all the way to SIG 200. So linear is usually something where it's like the more the better. Additionally, there's no percentages here. So this is just something where it just gets better and better. There's not like a threshold that you need to worry about, and we'll get to that later. Now, one other thing to look at here is the difference between SIG 1 and SIG 200. So, SIG 1 is less than 2,000 health, and SIG 200 is almost 8,500 health. That is a pretty stark difference. And that means that at SIG 1, while you will probably notice it right away, because that 1950 is, you know, coming up on 10% of his overall health. The chance to trigger is fixed, and that's another thing to look for, is any numbers that are not colored are something that's going to be the same regardless. So the chance to, for this healing to happen in the first place is the same regardless. It just gets stronger. So even at SIG 1, you will notice the healing, but every single SIG stone you put in Wolverine is going to improve that healing a similar amount, and he will benefit all the way to SIG 200. So let's consider another. Shang-Chi and Mojo are another two that are really interesting to consider. I probably could have found them, but I generally filter by class just because it makes this faster. So Shang-Chi's curve is also pretty close to linear. But what you'll notice here is that SIG 1 is almost exactly half of SIG 200. If you put an Awakening Gem into him, you are instantly getting half of the total benefit. And when I see something like that, I think, okay, this isn't someone who needs SIG stones all that much. Because this isn't a utility-based SIG, this is just damage, right? The green part of this SIG is just damage, and we get half of it for the investment of just an Awakening Gem or pulling him once. To me, that usually means I'm not willing to spend another 180 to 199 SIG stones, precious SIG stones, to get the other 50% of the benefit. Also notice that there is an entire ability here that is not represented on the graph, and that's just that now Shang chi can crit through block. Cool. One of the things that means is that you get that at SIG 1. 
so we get 50% of the overall benefit and an ability at SIG 1, and then only one of those abilities levels up with SIG stones. To me, that is the textbook case of somebody who you might be happy to use a class gem on, but you're probably only going to be feeding them stones if they're one of your main champions that you tend to take that you intend to take up to the highest rank or maybe they affect your prestige. I also mentioned Mojo, very similar. Almost linear. Sig 1 is about half of the total benefit. And notice here that you have these, it looks like three abilities, but really these three lines of text are one ability. This is what allows Mojo to ramp up over the course of a quest, which is really important to him. So Sig 1 goes a long way. Now, like Shang-Chi, both of them, if you play with them a lot, if they affect your prestige, if you just like them enough that you want to invest in them, because their curves are pretty linear, you are getting benefits all the way to the end. But they don't necessarily need more than Sig-1. That's the really important part. So if you're asking yourself, how high a Sig does somebody like Mojo or Shang-Chi need before you rank them? The answer is... One is pretty persuasive. So now let's look at some non-linear champions. So the classic for this is Hyperion. Now the thing is that from about this point on, it looks almost linear, but that's just because this curve is so flat. <laughs> right at the beginning, Sig 1 is 65% increased buff duration, which is awesome, all the way at 200 is only 75% increased duration. So you're getting like a sixth more. And most of that is already done by the time you hit SIG 20, where it's already crossed 70%. So Hyperion is the classic example of a champion with a very clear inflection point, meaning that after you get like, you know, 10, to 10 or 20 SIGs, anything after that, just is not a whole lot of benefit. So these are the champions where it's like, oh, you duped them once, take them up. That's awesome. That's all you need. But there are champions where, you know, those inflection points are a little bit less clear. Somebody like Mr. Negative comes to mind. Look at this. This is four different curves. None of them truly linear <laughs> and all of them with seemingly different inflection points. Now, with Mr. Negative, what you'll end up hearing a lot of people saying is that 40 or 60 is about the sweet spot. And if you look at these curves, that does make sense because that's about um, like here. Sometimes this is not always the most responsive of graphs. But somewhere along here, which is clearly like about where this light green line, you know, changes its direction, and it's at a good spot on the top two lines. So that's kind of about where you get the most bang for your buck for the regen from degeneration, from the direct damage when he's immune to something, and then it's a good amount on this energy resistance and the direct damage. Now, again, looking at if the direct or if the energy resistance is what matters to you, if you think that's going to be an important component of your play style with Mr. Negative, then this is closer to linear, this pink line here. And it benefits all the way to SIG 200. If you think that these last two bullet points are important to how you play him, then he benefits all the way up. You shouldn't really stop. But it also means that if you're just looking to rank him and have a powerful champion on your roster, 20, 40, 60 might be, or any of those really, probably are enough to really get a lot of benefit. Now, we also unfortunately have a few champions that go completely the other direction, like Thor. This is the kind of curve that should scare you. Because not only is this not linear, but most of the benefit is at the end. You get these tiny armor breaks of only 500 at SIG 1. 
and at SIG 200 you get massive armor breaks of 4,500. And if you look all the way at SIG 140, you're about halfway to the benefit from SIG 200. The last 60 SIGs are as important as the first 140. This is the kind of champion that you should only invest in, in my opinion, if you are willing to go all the way to 200. Because otherwise, you're leaving value on the table. Those SIGs should probably have gone to someone else. So just be very careful if you're looking at a champion and you pull up a curve and it looks like Thor's. It's generally not the best sign. So another thing that we should definitely talk about is the idea of thresholds. The two most popular of these, Angela and Archangel. So Angela has these percentage abilities, and if you're looking, the idea is basically because these are additive, it says for each buff on Angela you get this benefit, you want to think about when these numbers, when multiples of these numbers add up to 100% total. So at SIG 1, you would need 10 buffs on her to completely get rid of damaging debuffs and to be completely immune to nullify and autoblock, or at least to have a 100% ability accuracy reduction. At SIG 200, you only need three. So then the important question becomes, which threshold matters to me? Because there's going to be, you know, all those numbers in between 10 and 3. Now, if you are running her on her own and you play Angela a lot, then what often comes up is, well, it's really easy to have three buffs on Angela. And so getting three buffs on her, you don't necessarily have to go to um, 200. 180 is enough. Now, maybe you run her with the Recoil Tree Masteries, with Liquid Courage specifically, because that constant poison damage triggers her regen, and then you probably have four up at all times. Then you can come all the way down to just over 100, because that puts you at 25%, which means that you need four buffs total, the three that you can easily get from her kit and the regen. So this is one of the reasons that people say she's so good with Liquid Courage, because it drops her threshold from 180 to 100. If you're running her with somebody who can supply extra buffs, like Odin, and so maybe you're going to have five or six buffs, well, if you're going to have five up, then Sig 60 is enough. If you're going to always have six buffs up, then Sig 40 is enough, because that multiplied by six is already over 100. So those are the kinds of thresholds you need to consider. Am I going to be running Angela on her own? Am I going to be using Liquid Courage or not? Which threshold matters to me? 16.67%, 20%, 25%, 20 or 33%? Which one is it? Now, there's a lot of debate about Archangel's SIG ability. Um, you should definitely <laughs> talk to some people about that, put some thought into it, because there's a very good argument that SIG 1 is all you need, because notice that's a 25% threshold, and this is also for each neurotoxin. There's a good argument that you're normally going to be shooting for four or more, so SIG 1 is enough. That's the threshold you need. But if you're regularly using Archangel where maybe it's harder to get, you know, four or more, well then that's where um, the famous SIG 120 comes in, because that gets you to, okay, now you get to 100% at three neuros. These are the kinds of things that you need to think about. What SIG do I want for any champion that has a threshold like that, where it's for each effect, there's a percentage, and they add up, and you want them to add up to 100. Speaking of 100%, there are also champions where there's a real incentive to get all the way to 100%. Now, I don't have time to completely rehash the Captain America debate. I think that, personally, a lot of his abilities are pretty useful below 100%. But this skill one, if you want to use him to take like a biohazard node, then this really matters. 
And so then he starts to feel almost like Thor, where what matters to you is the 100% chance. Something like 80% wouldn't be enough. And so if that's what matters to you, if you need the reliability, then you should probably wait to invest in him until you can take him all the way up. I personally haven't done that. I've started feeding mine, and I'm already enjoying him Sig 40. But again, that's kind of something for another video. The more classic example where I don't think there's really any debate is Namor. This is a fairly linear curve, but the value comes from taking no damage yourself because you are reflecting all of it to the opponent. So this is one, like Thor, where you probably don't want to invest in him until you can take him to SIG 200, or at least until you are committed to doing so. So let's look at a couple champions that kind of have combinations of these. One of the first ones I'm going to address is Reed, my personal R4, and I get questions about his SIG all the time. Now, right away, notice there's an ability you get regardless of SIG level. You just get these extra chance to evade unblockable attacks. That's awesome. Then you see a very linear curve. Starts at 10%, which is a lot less than 50%, and then you get a lot of increase all the way up. So that tells you he improves all the way to SIG 200. You'll still feel that 10%, kind of like with Wolverine, but every 20 SIG stones in him will feel powerful provided you get the passives up on the opponent. That's another thing to keep in mind. How much is this effect that I'm improving going to come up? With Wolverine, it happens on every single hit. You don't really have to worry about it. With Mr. Fantastic, these passives may not come up in every fight. I finish a lot of fights before they come online. And so you just have to ask yourself, okay, how much does this matter to me? And if I decide it matters to me, what level along here is acceptable to me? Personally, I think Reed is worth ranking unduped for the reasons I just went over. But if you were going to ask yourself, okay, what SIG level is good? Well, then maybe you might come along here and go, okay, at SIG 60, he's basically... Yeah, look, he's almost halfway to the total. If you get him to, like, SIG 70, then that's halfway to the 50% he gets at SIG 200. That starts being a really competitive advantage. That's kind of a break-even point I tend to look for. What is required to get half of the total benefit? Because that's usually a pretty good line. Another difficult champion that people talk about all the time is Guardian. And you'll notice right away that this blue line here, the energy resistance, looks like Thor's armor breaks. This is why so many people say Guardian needs max SIG, because so much of the benefit is in the last few SIG stones, or the last few SIG levels. But you also have these three pretty linear ben benefits. So you get a ton of block proficiency, get a ton of bleed resistance, and crit damage resistance along the way. This is one reason why I think that you would be happy to rank either an unduped Guardian, because his kit's just that good, but that's separate, but I also think that it, it, you would get real benefit out of ranking a SIG 60 Guardian. Because that's going to be, right here, we have, you know, a thousand extra block proficiency, 150 crit damage resistance, and a full 43% reduction in bleed damage. That's not bad at all, especially if you have willpower or you're reducing it in some other ways. You're not going to take Biohazard with him, but that can definitely get you some, through something like maybe a Morningstar. Well, not a Morningstar because his hits do energy damage, but that's beside the point. So for any of those kinds of champions, you want to think about, okay, what am I getting out of it? What matters to me? Can I be happy with the benefit that I have at this SIG level and plan to take him or her higher later for more benefit? Or am I not going to be happy using this champion at all until they are at whatever level I would like them to be at, as with Thor? Trust me, speaking from experience, I have a SIG 200 five-star Thor. He was miserable to play until about 180. So another thing that I've touched on a little bit throughout here 
which is less about you know what SIG level you want to look for and just on evaluating SIG levels in general is you always want to be relating them back to the base kit. You'll remember when I started with Wolverine I was talking about okay this regen is a percentage of his max health. That's an important thing to keep in mind because then you see something like Odin SIG and you see okay so at SIG 200 he gets this Fury buff and at SIG 200, he gets a Fury buff that's a full 953. That sounds pretty good, right? His base attack is only 3200. That's like a 30% Fury, right? Except it isn't, because at all times, Odin has um, these Fury buffs. Gaining at least double his, ba or his base attack which means that on top of that, this isn't doing a whole lot. Similarly, he gets this armor up, giving him almost 3,000. This armor up isn't doing a whole lot. He can double those with a special 3, and have over 10,000 attack, and like 7,000 armor, these aren't doing a whole lot. So again, that's just something to keep in mind, is when you're evaluating SIG levels, try and bring them back to the base kit. Like we were talking about Hyperion, okay, how important is buff duration to him? Well, he has a lot of freaking buffs, so very. That's the kind of thing you want to keep in mind. Textbook bad sig over here with um, OG Abomination. This is a linear curve. You get a lot of benefit for every sig level because it starts pretty low, but the ability itself is bad <laughs> because it just doesn't do that much damage you get more damage out of the Red Guardian synergy. So again, always relate it back to the base kit. And as I was saying, try to identify a point that you'll be happy with. So I personally put Sig Stones into Mysterio early on because he was my first rank three and he was at the top of my prestige for a long time. I do not regret giving him those stones, because if you look here, this is a linear benefit. I took him to SIG 100, and that really cut down on the time that I had to wait for each gas. We went from 20 seconds to about 12 seconds. That's a 40% decrease. I get real benefit from that whenever I play him, and so I don't regret that. That's the kind of thing where you're like, okay, even if I don't end up taking this person to SIG 200 long term, I got real benefit out of it, I play them, I'm going to use it, I can live with that. The counterpart to that is one of the single biggest mistakes I have made with my account, which is that I gave about 40 SIG stones to Cosmic Ghost Rider. Now, this looks like a significant amount of damage, you know? Mine is currently at SIG 80. 2300 damage is great, right? Except that this is Cosmic Ghost Rider. And he does so much more damage than that, that this green number, which is again the only thing that improves with SIG level, is basically useless. The important part is that it, the Power Lock debuff becomes a Damnation debuff, and notice all of that is white text, so it doesn't scale with SIG level. That's the kind of thing that you want to go, okay, maybe I'm happy investing in Cosmic Ghost Rider because I'm going to take him to rank 4. He's going to be my prestige option. I want him to be as strong as he can possibly be. That wasn't true for mine, and so I regret this. That's the kind of thing you want to avoid. We talked about Captain America earlier, Ultimately, you probably want to get him to SIG 200. If you're like me and you're willing to play him at 60, then if you get him to like SIG 60, rank him, and then you decide, you know what, actually, I kind of want to put my stones into Void or, I don't know, Spider-Man 2099. Let's pick that. Or just a higher prestige option. Maybe you pull Overseer. You just have to make sure that if you decide to give stones to Cap to get him to SIG-60, that you are okay with him staying at SIG-60, or 
that you are going to take him all the way to 200 and you're not going to be sad about pulling a different science champion that could also benefit from the stones. This is the kind of balancing act that you need to do if you, in my opinion, want to feel good about where you put your sig stones. And I realize that it's difficult. This is something that people at every level of the game struggle with and sometimes agonize over because it's important. But one of the most important things in this equation is understanding how these sig levels scale and how they affect the champions. And so that's why I'm making this video so that you can process these graphs and come to those conclusions whenever you feel the need to. So I hope you guys found this interesting, helpful. Let me know any champions that you're considering, that you're wondering, okay, do I need to get them a little bit higher before ranking them? Any decisions you've made recently along these lines that you want to share with people, put them in the comments, let me know. And until next time, thanks for watching, and take care.